All right, our next topic is bond polarity. So what we said with covalent bonds, is that we have shared electrons. Um, and that's true. However, these electrons aren't always shared evenly. Sometimes one atom will host the electron or pull on that electron more than the other atom will. And thus it'll get more of that electron's time, if you will. And so that has to do with electronegativity. which again is a measure of how hard an atom pulls on uh, the electrons in a bond, right? And towards the top left, or top right, my bad, we have the most electronegative atom. Remember, we don't really consider our halogen or our uh, noble gases because they often don't form bonds. So our fluorine is actually our most electronegative element. Um, hydrogen itself is not very electronegative. And if you want actual numerical values, you can look on ptable.com, right? That site that we use. So let's go ahead and just pop that back up, right? Periodic table. Again, you go over here and click to left electronegativity, and then you can see the values there, right? Fluorine, you can see 3.98 is the highest. Um, hydrogen's up here with 2.2, which is not bad, but you know, not as good as nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at what happens when we have bonding between two different uh, elements. So let's take a look at HF, right? And so what we say is that fluorine is much more electronegative than hydrogen. And so even though they're sharing electrons, they're not sharing it evenly. So that high, the, those electrons are mostly sticking with the fluorine. So if you think about this blue as, as the electron density, Right, it's mostly on that fluorine. And so since we have a part of an atom that has more electrons than the other, it's more negatively charged than the other side. And so what we indicate that is two possible ways. Um, you can do this delta sign. So that hydrogen has a partial positive, delta means partial, and then over here, partial negative, right? That fluorine is more negatively charged than that um, hydrogen, right? So that's, again, that stands for partial positive. And this stands for partial negative, right? The partial negative is always going to be on the more electronegative atom. Another way we can draw that is with a dipole arrow. So we say that this molecule has a dipole. It has part of it that's positive, part of it that's negative. Not the full on charge, but partially. Um, on the uh, one end of the arrow, we have a positive sign. So that's the positive end of our molecule. And then on the other side, we have the arrow head um, that counts as the negative end, right? And so that shows us which way our charge is pointing towards. And we call this a dipole arrow. And so whether a bond is polar or nonpolar, it depends on the difference in electronegativities of these. If they have about the same electronegativity, they're going to be sharing um, the electrons evenly. If they have a significantly different enough electronegativity, they are going to be classified as a polar bond. So for example, um, this right here, HF is a polar bond, right? We have a positive end and a negative end. Um, and so again, it depends on the difference in electronegativity. So when we have nonpolar, your difference in electronegativities is somewhere between zero and 0.4. Um, with polar compounds, the change in electronegativity is about 0 0.4 to approximately 1.8. Um, and again, that's all referencing these numbers uh, found on this uh, ptable.com or other you know, periodic tables where you just Google um, electronegativity. And then finally, if our electronegativity is so different from one atom to another, then the one atom just takes its electrons from the other one. And so we call that ionic bonding, which we've already covered. And that's if you have an electronegativity um, difference of greater than 1.8. Um, these are all just general numbers. I don't expect you to memorize any electronegativities. It's not really a useful exercise to do. Um, I'm, we're, we're just going to stick by this rule. In general, if we have two different nonmetals bonded to one another, they're going to be polar, right? So for example, H and F, right? We have two different atoms. They are polar. 
Um, if you have the two of the same, so like hydrogen and hydrogen, they're going to be pulling on each other the same. So they're overall nonpolar. The only one that I really want you to know is that carbon hydrogen bonds are nonpolar. The difference between electronegativities is just very small, even though they're different atoms. Just to give you a frame of reference, carbon 2.55, hydrogen 2.2. So that difference is you know, 0.35, um, which lands us to this nonpolar range. The reason that I want you to know that carbon hydrogen bonds are nonpolar is that most organic compounds, and you're an organic compound yourself, are made out of carbon hydrogen bonds. And that's, um, as we'll talk later, that's why you don't dissolve in a bunch of water.